Hello, and welcome to this video that is going to discuss the signs of the trig functions uh, for angles whose terminal side lies in one of the four quadrants, okay, uh, i.e. the terminal side is not on an axis, okay, so just uh, so you kind of have an idea what we're talking about here, if this were the terminal side of an angle called theta, okay, uh, now we're going to look at the cosine sine or tangent of that angle. Um, it would come out to be positive or negative by following these laws here that you've probably studied already. Um, we're going to take a look at where these values are positive and where these values are negative. Uh, and as you can guess, as I rotate into other quadrants and realize that the angle of theta... Uh, is changing, um, it may be the case that cosine, sine, and tangent, um, the sine might change. So well, let's take a look um, at how this works throughout the four quadrants. Uh, I'll guide you through it, and hopefully you'll uh, draw a conclusion from it and then be able to sort of understand where this idea of all students take calculus, this little old-fashioned sort of mnemonic device, um, is used. Okay, so let me throw this angle over here into the uh, first quadrant for a second. Okay, so it could be any angle in the first quadrant. It could be from here up to here and, again, not on the axis. So I'll just leave it here for uh, just a second. Okay, well, again, we're just examining signs here, not actual numeric values. So let's take a look what we have. Uh, we know that x in the first quadrant is positive, and so is y. r is always positive because it is the radius of uh, a circle, per se. Uh, again, that circle is where there's a point on the uh, terminal side of the angle, and there is, in fact, a circle at the center, okay? And it intersects that point. And then R would, in fact, be this distance here, the radius of that circle, okay? So just to refresh your memory that R is always positive because it's the radius of a circle. But as you would guess, as I go from quadrant to quadrant, the sine of X and Y will change. So let's just take a quick look at what we have here. Okay, so for the cosine rule here, we have it that it's uh, X over R, so it would be a positive over a positive, and that's equal to a positive uh, sine, is equal to y over r, which would be a positive over a positive, and the value of sine here for any angle in the first quadrant would also be positive, and then we have tangent, which is y over x. Here we know that y is positive and x is positive, so positive over positive is a positive. Okay, so we have the cosine, sine, and tangent are all positive in this quadrant, okay? So now let's take a look at this idea over here in the second quadrant, okay? So for any angle in the second quadrant, so it would be something rotating from here to here, but not on the axis, okay? Again, that angle would look something like this, okay? So you have an idea of where the angle and standard position is, okay? What we have here, that we have a negative x value, you've got to go left from the origin, but you're still going up. So y would be uh, positive, and like we said, r is always positive because it's the radius of a circle, uh, as you've seen this diagram drawn before. Okay, so let's take a look now at what we have. Well, cosine is x over r, so it would be negative over positive, right? So that would be negative. Okay, and then sine would be uh, y over r, which is positive over positive, which would be positive, okay? And then you have tangent, which is y over x, so that is positive over negative, and that would be negative. So here you see of the three values, two of them are negative and one of them is positive, okay? So now let's take a look at if we were to Look at this model down here in quadrant three. Okay, I hope I'm not 
needing to review the quadrants too much here. This is obviously quadrant three. And over here will be four. I'll do that in a second. Okay. So if you had an angle whose terminal side were anywhere between 180 plus, barely more, and just less than 270 degrees, 180 to 270, not including 180 and 270, uh, it would fall somewhere in the third quadrant. And here you see that it is x is negative, y is negative, but r again is always positive. So your cosine of x over r is negative over positive, and that's a negative. And sine would be y over r, which is negative over positive, which is negative. And tangent would be y over x, which is negative over negative, which is in fact a positive. Okay, so we see here again that two of the values are negative and one is positive. So in quadrant four, I'll uh, just kind of hopefully speed this process up. For any angle uh, coterminal and anything uh, that is between 270 and 360, or 3 pi halves and 2 pi, uh, you'll see here what we have here is that x is a positive value, y is a negative value, and r is always positive. Therefore, the cosine of uh, any angle in the fourth quadrant would be a x over r, which is positive over positive, which is positive. Sine would be negative over positive, because it's y over r, so that would be a negative. And tangent would be y over x, which is negative over positive, which in fact is negative. Okay, so this seems like a lot of information, so how are you going to remember it? Well, it comes down to this idea of all students take calculus. Okay, so you have ASTC, and I'll write this in green here. A, S, T, and C. Okay, well, if you notice here, I'll use the highlighter, is that in the first quadrant, all of the trig functions, their values are positive. So for any terminal side of an angle, or coterminal side of an angle in standard position that lies in the first quadrant, cosine, sine, and tangent will always be positive. Okay, now in the second quadrant, I'm sorry, and that's what the A stands for, the A stands for all. So you can probably guess now, what does the S stand for? Well, it stands for sine, because it means that any angle in the second quadrant that's in standard position, there's a terminal side in the second quadrant here, uh, if you notice, only the sine is positive, okay? And cosine and tangent are negative. Okay, similarly, if we come down to quadrant 3, which says T, we say that tangent is positive here, okay? Use the highlighter again. You see that the only uh, trig function down here is tangent. That is positive. Okay, and in quadrant four. Similarly, you see that we have the C written here, which means that the only trig function that has a positive value when the terminal side of the angle lies in the fourth quadrant is cosine. So, all students take calculus stands for all sine, tangent, cotangent, excuse me, all sine, tangent, cosine, okay, in quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, it's kind of ironic there that I said cotangent for a second because it begs the question of if you have these three trig values uh, that are positive or negative, uh, what does it mean for their reciprocal values? If you notice here, um, if you take the reciprocal of cosine, you get secant. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. And the reciprocal of tangent is cotangent. Well, I kind of lied to you a little bit earlier where we said that the only value um, in a certain quadrant that was positive uh, was the one I highlighted. Uh, it stands to reason, and I hope you can extend this, the premise of this drawing when we say all students take calculus it's really based on telling you where the major three trig functions are positive, cosine, sine, and tangent. 
But it, it, with a little thought, you should be able to say, okay, well, if I just take the reciprocals of those values, the sign isn't going to change, because if you take a fraction and flip it over, it's still going to be whatever sign you started with. The reciprocal of a positive is a positive, the reciprocal of a negative is a negative. So here, if you want to talk about all students take calculus, where all of the functions uh, in the first quadrant, they are in fact positive, because the reciprocal of these three, when they're positive, is still positive. Okay, and there's a little thing I'm going to write in the background here in the second quadrant. If it says that sine is positive, well, so is cosecant. Because when you flip sine over, you get cosecant. So when you flip that positive, it's still positive. Okay? And down here for tangent in the third quadrant, well, you probably guessed. When you flip tangent over, cotangent uh, is going to have the same sign. So down here in the third quadrant where it's positive, cotangent's also positive. And in the fourth quadrant where cosine is positive, the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So secant will also be a positive value down there. Okay? So this information is really important. Uh, the questions you'll encounter when you deal with it, uh, they really range um, from very simple to very complex. The simplest is to say, here's a trig function given on a certain angle. Is the value going to be positive or negative? Okay, so that question in and of itself just makes you apply this ASTC and their reciprocal values, um, you know, to that. You're also going to need to know this uh, for many other uh, ideas in trig uh, because it's really important for us to consider the sign of a value uh, often when solving equations uh, that involve trigonometry and things of that nature. So you have to become fluent in understanding uh, what is the sign of a uh, trig function given the value of theta and the particular trig function. So I hope that this makes sense. Remember, you just want to apply all students take calculus and understand the background of replies to their reciprocals and realize that ASTC corresponds to the quadrants 1, 2, 3, 4 where in the first quadrant, all the trig functions are positive. In the second quadrant, sine is positive, also cosecant. In the third quadrant, tangent's positive, also cotangent. In the fourth quadrant, cosine's positive, also secant. And obviously, if it's not positive, it's going to be negative. So this will be a way for you to build some fluency in understanding what uh, values will be what sign. Okay, so um, hopefully you will be uh, putting this to good use in the near future, and enjoy.